Welcome to episode 346 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing writer-director Christian Sesma, who was on the podcast a couple of years ago in episode number 134, so check that episode out if you have time and want to hear a bit more about his background. But this week we'll be talking about his new film, Pay Dirt, starring Val Kilmer and Luke Goss. We talk about writing the film, casting it, and how it came together for him, so stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast and then just look for episode number 346. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and career letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash slash guide. So a quick few words about what I'm working on. I'm still plugging away on my mystery thriller feature film, The Rideshare Killer. I just sent back notes to my editor, so we're doing another pass remotely. In the meantime, I'm bringing on my colorist, sound people, and composer. In fact, we have our first real meeting with the composer this morning in just a few minutes, right after actually I finish up with the podcast. I'm hoping to get two insert shots, two or three insert shots here over the next couple of weeks, so I'm sort of organizing that. But it's coming together nicely, and we're still hoping to get it all done by the end of the year. That's still our, our deadline. So hopefully we will make that and it still looks pretty reasonable. So I'm going to be announcing the folks who made it into the second round of SYS's six figure screenplay contest. Hopefully next week, I'm actually recording this podcast on August 28th. So it's not going to be released for two over two weeks. So hopefully I'll have actually made the announcement before this episode even publishes. We're still reading through the scripts. I kind of figured the contest closed July 31st and I figured it would take us probably probably a month to get through all the scripts. So we're kind of on pace to do that. So then early September, we'll be making that announcement. Each script is getting read by at least three first round readers. So it's just taking us some time to get through everything, but we should have everything read hopefully by the end of the weekend. And then hopefully I can start to really go through the scripts and um, figure out which ones were the most highly rated. A lot of them have already sort of surfaced and and bubbled to the top, just in terms of the the ratings that I've seen. Um, The scripts have been coming in since, 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 since I guess April, um, April or May. And um, so I've already started to get scripts out to the industry judges and, and that sort of thing. So I would say most of the scripts are through the system. Um, but as I said, we're still the scripts that came in towards the end of July, we're still processing. So the idea is hopefully in September, we'll make this announcement about who's making it into the second round. And then the quarterfinals and semifinals, they'll be announced in October. And then our finalists and winner will be announced in November. So stay tuned for all of those announcements. Um, if you entered the contest, contest, don't worry, sit tight. I will be sending out an email to everyone and that will be the first announcement that I make. It will just be an email to everyone that entered the contest and then I'll be announcing everything on my blog, obviously sellingyourscreenplay.com, all our various social media channels, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Um, So just keep an eye on those and then hopefully next week as well, I'll do um, do a real official announcement through the podcast, but hopefully we'll have um, a a formal announcement before this this episode airs and, and certainly before next week episodes airs as well. So just keep an eye out for those announcements. So now let's get into the to the main segment. Today, I'm interviewing writer-director Christian Sesma. Here is the interview. Welcome back, Christian, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Awesome. Thanks for having me. So you were on the show before in episode number 134, so I will um, put that in the show notes and direct people to that episode. We dug into your background a little bit so people can kind of learn more about where you're from and kind of how you got started in that interview. But today we're going to talk about your new project, um, the film Pay Dirt, starring Luke Goss and Val Kilmer. And maybe to start out, you can just give us a quick pitch or a logline. What is this new film all about? Yeah, the movie is about uh, an ex-parolee that gets out and has been planning this kind of five, five, five to seven-year uh, heist, 
uh, and he was put away by the sheriff whose life kind of took a, a wrong turn after doing this and has been obsessed with catching him and putting him back in this whole time. You know, the stories about the adventures that happened and all that good stuff. And, it, and where is this money? <laughs> yeah. Where did this idea come from? What was sort of the genesis of this, this idea? Um, like, I think that the, I, I always wanted to do kind of like a, a desert crime heist movie. I'm from here. I'm born and raised in Palm Springs. The Coachella Valley is my home. It's my backdrop, my backyard. And, you know, like any, like any, if we're talking about screen script writing, we, that's always a strong, strong point. It's very cliche, but there's a lot of truth. I was able to really tailor make this movie with locations in mind that I knew would be cinematic and big and come off really cool on the screen that had not really been seen before from out here, much less. Perfect, perfect. So, well, let's dig into your writing process a little bit. Um, where do you typically write? Are you writing at a home office? Do you go out to Starbucks and write? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's between my home and uh, a, a local coffee shop out here called Ernest Coffee in Palm Springs, which is the best. So uh, I'm, I'm either gotcha. there or I'm here at home. Gotcha. And when do you typically write? Morning, afternoon, evening, late in the middle of the night? Morning sessions. I'm an early bird, always have been. I like kind of you know hitting the gym and then just writing right after and just getting nice and caffeinated. <laughs> yep, yep. Nice and caffeinated up and just writing. Yeah, sure. And when you're working on a screenplay, how much do you write per day? Um, do you blast through 16-hour days? Do you write a no, few hours? No, no, then... I try. No, because I think I think for me, my process is, you know, there's kind of like a peak page page capacity. You know, I think that I write probably best from like six or seven, like probably like seven or eight a.m. till about lunch, and I can, you know, I can be pretty productive and then and probably I would say like, you know, nine, nine PM till about midnight of my days when I'm really in the script writing process or if I'm a script job. Um, I think that's my most productive time. But I'm like obviously I'm a family, this, that and the other, and in the morning. So uh, I usually kinda of average I can average out about like, you know, six to eight, nine pages a day. Yeah. And so with pay dirt, um, how much time did you spend with this outline stage versus actually in final draft cranking out script pages? You know, how, my process is this. I always do it every time I start with it. I start with a, a log line, right? Like a one sentence long line. Mm -hmm. Then I beef out to synopsis. Then I write like a one page treatment broken up by acts. And that's, and that's really it. And then I come up with a title that kind of gets me excited. But that's usually my process. And after that, I go straight to final draft and start writing and allow the story to start telling itself and going on the ride. Mm -hmm. And the way I do is like I'm just watching the movie play out in my head and basically recording what I see and hear is very much the style. And, uh, you know, Pedro, I think I wrote, in, I don't know, eight days or something like that. It's really yeah. fast. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And what does your development process look like? Do you go through several drafts on your own? Do you have some trusted um, friends that you send the script out? Um, what yeah, does that look like there's for a, you? there's a few people that, yeah, there's a few people. A lot of times I run it by my agent, things like that. But um, Pedro went through a few drafts, maybe, maybe, but it was pretty, this one, this one hit pretty fast. I mean, people really liked the first, second draft. I think, I think it was like the first draft got everybody on board and we did just some shooting draft revisions because you know you always have to revise it once you get into once you get into production or pre-production and start kind of revising people schedules and locations and things like that but for the most part we we, we shot like a very close to first draft version which isn't which isn't normally the case but still yeah what's your take on sort of the classic three-act structure um you know the blake snyder sid fields how do you approach screenplay structure with something like pay dirt um I, re I did approach it kind of uh, standardly in a very kind of typical fashion, you know, where the good, the fun thing is that in these we have multiple storylines taking place with different characters. And so I just make sure to tie them up at like the end of page 27 when I'm, you know, finishing up act one and then making sure we're hitting our, our action beats. I think those action beats, you know, it's, you, you open up with the action sequence on, you know, first three pages, you, you, know, you kind of hang out and then you start, beefing i mean like it's usually like every 10 pages we're doing something you know actiony to kind of keep mm -hmm. keep the pages moving to keep everybody involved and interested and, and making sure that we hit that kind of peak and then you're kind of mid act two act three we always say fake finale so you know we kind of you, you, you create this like fake ending that you think is going to end but there's still another ending right uh 
and, and, and act three, and then you just tie it on up. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of still, I still adhere to that for the most part because it's a very clean way of storytelling, I think, and it's very subconsciously uh, accepted when people watch it. So in terms of approaching sort of the crime heist genre, um, how did you come at that? Um, I mean, the heist genre has some really great movies, Ocean's Eleven, and these are generally regarded as really clever, well-written scripts. Um, So how did you kind of approach that, and how did you give it sort of a unique spin? Well, again, this was something that I was, you know, I'm a huge, you know, Guy Ritchie fan, Soderbergh fan, this, that, and the other, so... You know, I definitely wanted to, you know, make a, an indie version of that. Obviously, our budget is what they had in a day, but <laughs> it was still, or or less, but it was still one of those things where I wanted to at least have the elements there that will feel familiar, even though we couldn't. You know, I think I think a lot of times in the crime heist genre, you're location hopping, you're character hopping quite a bit that you don't have that luxury in an independent film for budgetary reasons, right? We can't mm-hmm. just go skipping around, but I thought I'd try to kind of bring enough of those elements, enough and cut it and intercut flashbacks and things like that enough that it felt familiar when you were, when you're watching this, you go, Oh, this is the feeling I'm getting from this kind of movie, you know? And then also, also the ending where, you know, it's the, it's the MacGuffin ending this whole, the whole time I'm writing it like they're after this cash, this cash, 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 where'd the money go? Where'd the money go? Where'd the money go? And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, there was no money. That was all just a kind mm-hmm. of like, as a MacGuffin or kind of like a, a, a sleight of hand or a diversion mm-hmm. to kind of keep people off Damien Brooks's trail as they laundered the money through the casino the whole time. And um, you're also a producer, so I'm going to be curious to kind of get your thoughts on that process. Once you were done the script, you put on your producer hat, what were some of those steps to actually getting this movie funded and getting it into production? Well, the good thing is we it was funded before we started writing. So oh, gotcha. like, yeah. So when we came to me, it was, it was all uh, when Jack Campbell from Octane came to me, uh, with, with the opportunity to make a movie in my backyard. And I started coming up with concepts of what to make. Um, you know, that's, I, I knew I wrote with budget in mind. I knew what I, I, we, I knew what we could do and what we couldn't do. So, uh, that hat kind of didn't ever, didn't come off for the most part as I'm writing. I got you. And so to maybe take us uh, um, back a little bit. What does that process actually look like? Were these producers or production company you had worked with before and or distributed worked with before they came to you and said, hey, you know, we want to make an action movie. What what do you have? We have funding in place. Maybe yeah. walk us through that process a little bit. Yeah. So they, you know, Jack came to me who was involved in the movie I shot here in my backyard called Night Crew uh, in 2014. And, um, you know, that was a really a big kind of indie action horror film that it was a ton of gunplay this that, and the other and he liked what we did here so when he came back to me and he was like would you want to would you want to do this again and obviously i said yes and you know i want but i wanted to play in a different genre which was more of the crime heist it was not we didn't have the budget for the action pieces and explosions and massive gunplay and that kind of stuff that we did on that movie but this one we just wanted to have again Elements that were familiar, but it wasn't it wasn't an action movie like at all. It was more of a crime heist thriller. Yeah. So when he came to you and basically was, was in these early stages, you're coming up with ideas. Um, was there any cast involved at that point, like Luke Goss or Val Kilmer, where they said, "Hey, we can get these actors, write yeah, them in." Um, for sure. I mean, Val was it. Val was a, a later a later um, opportunity, but definitely wrote it with everyone else for the most part in mind. Like Luke, for for sure. You know, I knew I, I knew that I, I could approach Luke with this. I mean, I felt it was it was definitely tailor made to that um, for him and, and and Mike and Paul Sloan and a couple of the female leads. Um, I knew that we could pull that off, and Val was kind of the icing on the cake as we started trying to find uh, you know, a really legendary actor to play the sheriff. And when he expressed interest, it was it was all amazing from there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um. What have you seen? I always like to close the interviews down um, just by asking the guests what they've seen. Is there anything you've seen recently that you thought was really exceptional? Netflix, Hulu, um, whatever you've seen, um, just give us a recommendation. As I said, it's a screenwriting-centric audience. Oh, my gosh. That's a tough one. I mean, I... I know, I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry about that. No, no, it's good. I should give you one before. I watch so much. I'm constantly watching movies. I'm constantly watching time. I'll tell you what, like... 
in the quarantine, that's all I've done is watch movies. And I will mm-hmm. say, a movie that I hadn't watched in forever that I start because I got like the projector and all this stuff. Like I'm like, hey, if we can't go to the movies, I'm gonna bring the movies to me. I'm gonna have a home theater here. But huh. you know, I'm not talking. I won't mention a, a new movie because I can't think of it off the bat. But I will say a movie that I hadn't seen maybe since whatever, and I watched it, fell all over in love with it again. Um, was Casablanca? I am in love with that movie right now. Like. I had seen it when I was a kid and I hadn't seen it recently. It's been forever and I hadn't seen it with like, I don't think I saw it since I became a filmmaker, put it that way. Yeah. And when I saw it, I'm like, yeah. dude, no wonder that like yeah. it had the elements there of any mainstream popcorn. movie. I mean, like Spielberg, I mean like Indiana Jones is friggin' is Rick, you know, totally. Mm-hmm. He's just off the element of the world. So I think watching these kind of old movies and seeing how they infused in writer directors, that infused me has been a, a really amazing process. Um, how can people see Pater? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Yeah, it's August 7th, on demand and digital everywhere. And then after that, okay. I mean, we're, there'll be news dropping about streamers and DVD sure. and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And what's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Twitter, Facebook, a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, I'll round up for the show notes. Hit me up on, yeah, just hit me up on Instagram at, at Sesskri, S-E-S-K-R-I. I think that's probably the best bet. Or Facebook, Christian okay. Sesla. Perfect, yep. perfect. We'll do. Well, Christian, congratulations on this film. Uh, hey, I thanks look forward so much. to um, talking to you in the future. Good luck with it. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. I just want to talk quickly about SYS Select. It's a service for screenwriters to help them sell their screenplays and get writing assignments. The first part of the service is the SYS Select screenplay database. Screenwriters upload their screenplays along with a logline, synopsis, and other pertinent information like budget and genre, and then producers search for and hopefully find screenplays they want to produce. Dozens of producers are in the system looking for screenplays right now. There have been a number of success stories come out of the service. You can find out about all the SYS Select successes by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. Also on SYS podcast, podcast episode 222, I talk with Steve Deering, who was the first official success story to come out of the SYS Select database. When you join SYS Select, you get access to the screenplay database along with all the other services that we're providing to SYS Select members. These services include the newsletter. This monthly newsletter goes out to a list of over 400 producers who are actively seeking writers and screenplays. Each SYS Select member can pitch one screenplay in this monthly newsletter. We also provide screenwriting leads. We have partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads services so I can syndicate their leads to SYS Select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting five to 10 high quality paid leads per week. These leads run the gamut. There's producers looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or properties. They're looking for shorts, features, TV and web series pilots, all types of projects. If you sign up for SYS Select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you several times per week. Also, you get access to the SYS Select forum where we will help you with your logline and query letter and answer any screenwriting related questions that you might have. We also have a number of screenwriting classes that are recorded and available in the SYS Select forum. These classes, these are all the classes that I've done over the years, so you'll have access to those whenever you want once you join. The classes cover every part of writing your screenplay from concept to outlining to the first act, second act, third act, as well as other topics like writing short films and pitching your projects in person. Once again, if this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, please go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. Again, that is sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing writer-director Jeff Barnaby, who just did a zombie film called Blood Quantum. He did a bunch of short films, which got him some attention, and those led him to this film, which is his second feature. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's our show. Thank you for listening.